We got another Captain Marvel trailer, and you know my head might explode from excitement during this show. And the man without fear is the man without a show, and I am broken about it. But he's, you know, he dies, he comes back. <laughs> Plus, we have two very special guests today from Marvel's The Runaways. And the minor mutations this week were so big that they'll probably be majors unto themselves. What happened this week? And Everything the Runaways happened. trailer dropped, and here to talk about that is Jeffrey Wilder himself, Ryan Sands. Hey. Welcome back. How's it going, man? Thanks for having me back. Good to be here. You were our very first guest, and now you were back to talk about a trailer that we talked about all those months ago. Yeah, yeah, excited, man. Excited. It's so soon. Yeah. So we'll get into that, but the, the second season's coming out December 21st. That's right, all 13 episodes. So it's bingeable this time. Hulu bingeable. is ready. Yeah, kick your feet up, just take it all in. <laughs> and if you haven't watched the trailer yet, pause this, watch the trailer come back, because we're going to dive deep into that. But there's another trailer that came out that you might have seen. Captain Marvel. <laughs> Featuring Chewy the cat that will be on everyone's desktop wallpaper by the end of the week. Asterisk, uh, we'll, we'll get into the identity <laughs> of the cat. Uh, but yeah, the second trailer for Marvel's Captain Marvel, uh, which is coming out this March, dropped on Monday night. And quick verdicts. I mean, I loved it. I really, it, it, I loved it so much it gave me faith in the cosmic universe. I didn't know how Marvel would land that, but the last like 12 seconds of this trailer sold me hard. What'd you think? Looks incredible. Um, it was funny, you know. I think all of us that that knew what was going on knew <laughs> that the the old lady wasn't necessarily <laughs> a kindly senior citizen <laughs> bus passenger. We knew what was going on, so it was kind of cool that uh, for the people that didn't, they got to see uh, you know see what what uh, Captain Marvel is really up to. But yeah, it looks incredible. Um, I'm like incredibly taken at how well this de-aging stuff is going on. I'm just yeah. like staring at Sam Jackson trying to look for the seams and I don't see him. <laughs> um, but yeah, it's just, I'm, I'm excited to see the world that they're going to uh, present because it's those actors. I mean, I'd watch Brie Larson, Jude Law, you know, do anything mm -hmm. yeah. so to, to have them play in this world. Um, I can't wait. Like to hear Cree and Skrull come out of actors' mouths yeah. that are like so yeah. prolific. And, yeah. and I like the Skrulls better now. The, the, I think the CGI augmentation over the prosthetic really works. And I love when they do that when it's like an 80-20 split. Um, because I wasn't sure about them before. They reminded me of like Dragon Ball Z. Mm -hmm. They had that like very mm -hmm. 90s sci-fi. But with the augmentation, I think they look solid. Uh, all the Cree. I love that the opening red brick turns blue with the Marvel 10. I love all of the like the name drops towards that crazy mythology. But most of all, I really like that the whole trailer's pace has that chrono chronological feel where we see different flashes of her through the ages. We keep playing with editing. We keep playing with that like style of film. So this, to me, looks like a different kind of Marvel movie than just the stereotypical origin because we know it plays with time. We know it plays with this crazy war. And then now with this last trailer, we know the scope of the cosmic. And I agree, like, three months of the internet, like, having those old lady memes and all the comic fans being like, <laughs> no, no, you'll see. But now, like, seeing that lady backflip was <laughs> yeah. like, yes. Yeah. It was funny because we're so deep in into it that I'm just like we all That's we were just like oh yes clearly this is what is happening but what I loved about seeing that be what they chose to open this trailer with is it it's just that confidence building thing where I was like this was all a plan of course it was <laughs> uh, Marvel is the silence they have a plan uh, and they like they were this, this specific build from the first one to the second one because I had some concerns when the first one came out where I was like I'm on board but I don't know what like general audience C is 100% mm -hmm. getting out of this and I like what they're building now where they're sort of just trying to get you invested in the specific mystery of this film um, because they know that they have a kind of a fight where like we're all waiting on the second chapter of a two part story and they need to get us interested in a completely different thing even though we know that it will tie in mm -hmm. like they need for us to sit in this movie and care about this movie and what's going on in it so they're setting it up with mysteries about her life with memories we know that they're hiding a lot more from us yeah. because of all that entertainment weekly stuff um, that they dropped that they really haven't been showing off in these trailers uh, but like, you know, most importantly, the trailer just made me excited and looked great. And she's flying around in space and she's got the yeah. mohawk and like everybody's finding out all this stuff that has made us in love with this version of the character. Uh, and it's really exciting, exciting to have everybody kind of get on board there. And to stay on the Dragon Ball train, she went Super Saiyan twice in this trailer. She did. And both times I was like, that's what cosmic energy looks like. It was the, a lot like Spider-Verse, it was the moments between the comic frames. Like when you flip a comic, you imagine what puts those pieces together. It was really cool for 
for me to see what cosmic looks like in motion. Like I've seen it drawn a bunch of times. I've imagined it, but but these movies allow you to see the moments between the frames. So you can piece it all together, and that's why I think Spider Verse is going to do incredibly. That's why I think Captain Marvel showing us what cosmic is. But the most important thing about that trailer, besides the fact that we're getting closer to Jude Law being the bad guy, I've told you he is. He's going to be the bad guy. Is they named the cat Goose after <laughs> Top Gun, which is the best name switch in the MCU history. So, f- folks at home, uh, she has a cat-ish in the comics. <laughs> um, that part maybe will let be a discovery for folks reading the comic. Look, look up Aliens Marvel, maybe. Uh, you know, uh, but the cat in the comics is named Chewy. And I guess they, I don't know, thought that would be confusing, thought it would make merch weird, thought people would interpret it as a, like... I don't know if maybe if they made the movie Cat Chewy, people would be like, whatever, because you're both owned by Disney, right. and we'd all be out there like, no, the cat's name is Chewy, <laughs> but no one would believe us. So I guess yeah. I, I like the new name. It's the anti wreck it Ralph. I they, don't know. they changed it out of their own merch. Mm. They left the umbrella because they own everything, which I respected. Second best wingman in the universe, Goose. Uh, did you give Chewy as number one? <laughs> I think so. Okay, that's it's hard. That's, there we go. It's, it's hard to go this. against that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Official co-pilot rankings. Right. Um, but the heart of Goose is going to be beautifully portrayed yes. in this amazing cat. <laughs> uh, I, I'm so excited, and I agree. The de-aging stuff, uh, like they all look amazing, and like the the cat scene. Everyone talking to the internet just shows how far we've come with comic culture. The mm-hmm. fact that people are talking about Captain Marvel's cat, like you say, Captain Marvel's cat. Only the guy in the back corner of the comic store right. five years ago would right. go, "Yeah." Now, like everyone on the internet, that's amazing. Yeah, I was I was expecting you know like a little reveal or something as, as uh, Fury's like playing with the cat. I'm like, uh-oh, uh-oh, <laughs> uh-oh. And, and, uh, but we didn't get it, which is, which is cool. It's going to be a great reveal in the movies for you know, people who don't necessarily know. I think it's just them doing to us again what they did with the lady on the subway. Yeah, like yeah. Essentially, they put a thing in and they didn't pull the trigger on it. And all of us who, are, who have in- informed guesses are, <laughs> are sort of like, oh, they're, nope, they're making us yeah. work. And they're just, they're going out layer by layer to get everybody hooked on this. Yeah, the marketing, I think, was, I think is great because I mean, it started at the end of Infinity War. Mm-hmm. Like, okay, what's, well, what's the symbol? And, yeah. you know, One a lot of, of us are moments. like this, and <laughs> it's a lot of people like, oh, what is that? <laughs> so, yeah, it just keeps building. And like you just said, the setup, okay, we're, we're talking, why is she hitting a senior citizen? What's, what's up with this? And I think it just keeps growing and keeps building. Layers are being peeled off, and we're starting to, to see, oh, that's why he called her at the end, because that's that's where my mind is going. Because I'm, I'm I'm seeing her, like you said, she's going Super Saiyan, and I'm thinking, wow, what does that look like against up against Thanos? Mm-hmm. So yeah, I'm I'm man, I'm looking forward to this thing. I hadn't thought of it that way. It is like a 10 month marketing campaign. Yeah, it got people yeah. interested. You see the symbol now, you know the character to a point. You've Googled it, you've wikied it, and then the follow up trailer, and then this trailer, and like this beautiful slow build of hype. And I'm really glad uh, this week was supposed to be a world of trailers. Uh, I'm actually <laughs> glad Captain Marvel got a chance to breathe. Uh, there was no Avengers trailer today. It is a national day of mourning. That was not a thing that was going to. This is be a in rumor the news. and then a counter rumor, <laughs> and it all seems pretty like yeah. likely, but again, it's not like they officially said we're going to do this, oh, we changed our mind. It's just everybody kind of all collectively losing our minds and trying to figure it out from Everyone doing this on the Um. internet and going, it happened! So we can officially confirm it did not happen. Uh, (laughs) But Friday, there's another rumored trailer uh, to drop that will take us far from home. Uh, I hope that that happens. I really think it might. See so what I'm you glad. did. See what you did there. I just did yeah. Very subtle, Cohen. Uh, but I like still, my brain is, so, is in Spider Verse. We got to see an early screening of Spider Verse. Oh. Um, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. But like right now, my brain is ready to just stay there forever. So that's going to be a really interesting challenge for mm-hmm. like any other. It's thing. also an interesting challenge to advertise a character that's dead. Like I'm really curious how they're going. to... We'll see. We'll see. But I'm glad Captain Marvel got time to breathe. I'm glad she got a good week on the internet to have this trailer live. I'm excited for the memes. Excited for people to talk about it. Uh, the thing I'm not excited to talk about. The <sighs> next piece of news: mm. the Devil of Hell's Kitchen <sighs> is the Devil of Nowhere at All. The, the devil of the undead because he is God now. Mm. I I really, really love... I started Marvel Movie News with Daredevil. Like I, I went back and watched my first episode because I just wrapped on that show, and I started with a, the first preview of Daredevil. So Daredevil's been my, my boy with hosting. Like Deadpool's my guy in movies, Daredevil's been my guy in TV, and this this cancellation like was especially impactful because I think this show was the first of its kind, and it really paved the way for a lot of other shows to exist. And it also was the most adult of the shows before... I mean, 
mean, obviously it evolved into Punisher and those things, but it gave that Marvel Knights corner of the Marvel Universe a chance to thrive and breathe. And I don't think without Daredevil, we'd have anything like what we had for television. I mean, currently with Cloak and Dagger, with Runaways, with, with the shows we have. So I'm really bummed. And I also think season three was like, I, I it went out on the, on the height but like it was so good that I wanted four and five and I wanted to grow with these characters and I loved every supporting character. I loved the leads, I loved the world it built. So Hell's Kitchen felt really important to me. Hell's Kitchen was a, a big part of my Marvel experience and arguably Daredevil might be my favorite property of like the translation. So I'm, I'm definitely affected by this cancellation and I'm worried long-term what this means for what's going to be gone if Punisher season two is the last, which we assume Jessica Jones season three, like all these things. Uh, what do you think about the cancellation as far as impact? Yeah, so we got the news on Thursday that Netflix has officially uh, ended their Daredevil series. They said, like, the, the quick hits, for those who might not have read the, the, the info on it, uh, they've said that the series will stay available on Netflix for, quote, years to come. And both Netflix and Disney issued statements basically saying that Matt Murdock has a future. Mm -hmm. uh, but we don't know what that means yet, obviously. Uh, and I, I, I did like I was I, I had to laugh because the this announcement dropped a day after Daredevil 612, uh, yeah, which, which was up. the end of Charles Soule's several years long run on the character and f was ending with like a big death of Daredevil thing. So he he tweeted he's like, that was only supposed to end my run. <laughs> <laughs> like, oh. And then he followed it up with a very sincere appreciation to the wonderful uh, folks who like because I think sort of unanimously agreed on, like, incredible people worked on this show. Yeah. Uh, they accomplished some great things. They they made me love The Punisher in a way that I did not <laughs> think was ever coming. Uh, like, a, a just wonderful actors, wonderful a series of showrunners working on Daredevil. Three, I think, really great seasons. Um, but, yeah, it does raise those questions of, like, I mean, I assume the rest of the Netflix verse will be following now that Iron Fist, Luke Cage, and Daredevil are down. Yeah. Uh, and it's part of this shifting future. I, like this has, for my guessing opinion, this this has to be for me a result of the changing corporate landscape and Marvel wanting to keep things in house, or Disney wanting to keep things in house, or with established relationships. Uh, it's you know we don't have the viewer figures, so we don't know if right. it took a crazy nosedive. But like, I, that's that. It's sad. It's sad for that to be the reason. And I love the internet being like, it's going to move to another network. It can be saved. But uh, it's so prohibitively expensive to rehire actors because they can be like, oh, wait a second. I, I was fired and this is a new contract. I'm not saying they would do that. I'm just saying it's, that's the thing that studios are going to look at. I, I would also, also guess that Netflix owns a piece of this forever. And therefore, like, you wouldn't want, if you're another network, say, just, just cold numbers. If you're another network, you don't want to send someone to your competition to watch the first three seasons of a thing. There are certain, like, studio things that just don't allow for this. So I personally don't have a lot of hope and it being picked up, I really hope I'm wrong. But like this so being canceled, the bummer. We don't want to pressure you on the talking about the guessing about the business side of it. <laughs> but like as a, a Marvel fan, how did you feel about this news? Oh man, it was it was tough because this season blew me away. Um, it was so incredibly well done. You know, like I I come to Daredevil and I'm expecting the uh, the the fight choreography. You know, I'm expecting the 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 hallway fights. You know, um, <laughs> mm -hmm. um, but. Like, I'm also an actor. Mm -hmm. I'm an actor. So I, from a performance standpoint, looking at the work that they were doing on screen, starting with, with Charlie Cox being just amazing in the role and just, How he so lovely is and so tough. Matt. Yeah, it's like, <laughs> oh, man. You almost did make a good decision. You didn't make the good decision, <laughs> Matt. Um, just give him a hug. Give Foggy a hug right now or something. Oh, you're going to take the wallet. Damn it. But, um... And 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 like Wilson Fisk, yeah. Vincent D'Onofrio, man, mm -hmm. like he's just yeah. You, you cannot take your eyes off of this man when he's on on screen. Um, oh man, what's uh, 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 Karen's boss, Jeffrey Cantor? I, I, I forget his uh, the the character name, but mm -hmm. I did a, a show back with Jeffrey years ago, so I always light up whenever he's on screen. Um, he's a so he's a personal favorite. Um, but yeah, man, just just the the work was just so bullseye. Oh man, uh, Winston Wilson yeah. Bethel killed it. And see, so I I stayed away from a lot of the the trailers just because mm -hmm. the anticipation, you know, I was just amped up and, and I really wanted to see the show, and uh, so I never saw the Bullseye trailer. Oh. So when when the bullets are flying and then people are starting to get picked off, I'm oh wow, this here it is. <laughs> and then the ricochet, I'm like oh here it is, yeah. So it was it, it was just so well done. Um, 
storytelling, action, you know, the the fighting, the the performances, the writing. I just yeah, man, just 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 big props to everybody who who worked on it. And it's encouraging to hear that he will live on. Mm-hmm. He has a future, but um you know, I would just have loved to just see this story just to keep unwinding and, and unraveling and see where we go. It makes me feel like I have to start thinking with my, like, theater kid brain where mm-hmm. you're like, look, maybe the original cast is only going to be there for a couple right, years. Right. You see it while it's good. You study that cast recording and you enjoy revivals if they come around someday, but you accept that, like, things have to end. And mm-hmm. it's just like, you know, I'd rather have, like, 14 seasons of Supernatural. You know, like, <laughs> we're, this is TV. You can do that. But, like, there is, you know... We can enjoy the seasons that we got. We can understand that, like, sometimes other realities get in the way. Um, I'm trying to be philosophical about it. We're, yeah. we're very lucky to have 11 years of Robert Downey Jr.'s Iron Man. We're very lucky to be yeah. in the position of, and who knows what's going to happen after the next movie. But for now, <laughs> it's really, it's really, I'm grateful for those things because they are not common. This show, I did the same thing where I was like, I just assumed I had this forever. Oh, it's real. <laughs> and like the, the Deborah Ann Walt Kingpin scene is in my brain one of the most comic book accurate for emotions. Mm-hmm. Like it was like watching the animated series or reading a comic, but in. Right before you Mm -hmm. and the way the action choreography Ninja Brewski like the way they they shaped the action it was actually beyond the comic for me Mm -hmm. and this was the first show where they did things that I didn't think the comic could even accomplish because it showed action in a way that I didn't think that humans could do much less my brain would like follow page to page so like the 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 fight scene with the all the supplies (laughs) that was like I never would have put that together so like all the team like Eric Olson the the showrunner this season the the amazing people that went into this I'm excited to see their future work because now I have an entirely new team to follow but the idea that I'll never get Charlie Cox's Daredevil again I'll never see Karen Page. I'll never. That's like an actual like because this has been five years we've lived with these characters. Mm-hmm. So this was the biggest uh, impact for me as far as cancellations. This and this and losing Donald Glover's Deadpool have been the two like, what what could have been? <laughs> uh, especially with the ending of season three, like it had a bow and then they're like, but it's not a bow and then they dove back in. I was right. like, ah. and so. we did like it's been reported that like they were ready to go in a season four. They they were working towards that and I don't know whatever the decision making was behind the scenes, uh, like. It, it is a shame because it, it doesn't seem like they were done. Well, scripts were done for Luke Cage and then boards were up for Daredevil. So, like, yeah. these shows keep getting everything cut right out from under them. At least Iron Fist had just wrapped, so I, I doubt they were as far along. But Luke Cage, like, I, it sounds like they were moving and then Daredevil sounded like it was like there were people in the in offices like, what happened? So, I just, it's just, it's a real bummer and, and I'm really curious what the landscape is. It does make you feel like Jessica Jones is going to be, like, reading Alias all over again, her original comics, where it's like, you get four arcs and then it's going to disappear and you're just going to slowly hook people on it for the next ten years and hope that there's ever more. Like, <laughs> And then you're cool. an Avenger. Well, well, well recreated. <laughs> yeah, it's a good problem to have, though. Yeah. You know, because it was done so well, it, it hurts. <laughs> but at least we got what we what we've got and like they like Netflix Netflix I can't say Netflix <laughs> Netflix said uh, it'll be up for years so so re- the rewatch is coming and Punisher season two is coming we'll yeah, get to a yeah, little yeah. piece of it again yeah now another trailer dropped this week and it was a trailer that was action-packed mm. that felt like another comic that I really enjoy that also felt like a very good translation but this trailer had a dinosaur in it. I am, of course, talking about the incredible Runaway Season 2 trailer. That came out of, like, it, it, there was no teaser. It just exploded. Like, the teaser was this, and then the trailer was, like, holy crap, man. Uh, what was it like for you to watch the trailer for the first time? Oh, man. We got uh, we got the email that morning and uh, with, the, with the little link and uh, to, you know, just give us a heads up that it was coming out. And I'm sitting there in my place looking at it, and just, <laughs> I was amped. I was amped, you know. I, I, I'd seen a little, you know, little things here and there. We got to, we got to see um, um, certain little, little scenes, but man, it's, it's just been amped up. The, the effects have, have all been amped up. It looked, they look great. Um, it's yeah, so much more action. Uh, we got the little MCU tie-ins that uh, we can talk <laughs> about later. But yeah, man, it's, it's, I'm, I'm excited. Because the, the first season kind of ends where the books take off, mm-hmm. and this looks like the books in a way that season two can. Yeah. So I'm really, what were your first impressions? Yeah, uh, I am, I have uh, have always been, you can probably make an entire clip show out of me being like, they're going to make Runaways? They're making <laughs> Runaways? They made Runaways? It's like my whole life on Heroes, the way yours with Marvel Movie News is, yes, is but- Daredevil, is probably all me being like, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> uh, and it is so exciting to get this trailer that really looks like 
uh, the, the magic uh, of what I love from the comics. But the other thing that I love about this show is that it doesn't just hook you on like the cool powers that these mm -hmm. kids have. It hooks you on these relationships, these families. Mm -hmm. uh, and the show, in fact, like, it, you know, you know, it took me, I was just like, oh, we, it's gonna go differently from the books, but then you're gonna really fall in love with this more time you get to spend with some of these folks. Because you can dive into the parents more than the comic could, and you can actually appreciate the father-son relationships and the mother-daughter relationships. It's really about family. It was the first show that I realized I was an adult because I was like, I'm identifying with the parents more than the kids. <laughs> it was the first show to make me feel old. So in the vein of good daytime television, we are reuniting father and son. What, what, what? Look, we found him! Hey! What's up? <laughs> What's up, man? What's going on? Good to see That's you again. Going, yeah. <laughs> Hello, hello, hello. Nice to meet you. Welcome to Collider Heroes. I'm Amy. We didn't get to meet yet. Hi, I'm Renzi. Nice to meet you. Renzi Felice? Yes, Renzi Felice. Welcome to Collider Heroes. Thank you. Thank you very much. So I love that we have father and son yeah. on a show <laughs> about fathers and sons. I love it. <laughs> Good to see you. Good seeing you. I saw him on the way in. He was like running in, and I was like, "What's going?" I was like, what, "What's going on?" I had no idea. This is great. Am I at the right set? What just yeah, happened? Yeah. <laughs> so uh, we talked about his first thoughts in the trailer. What was it like? Your first viewing? Oh my god! I went nuts for it. I loved it. I, I love to see all the all the action that we got in it. Because uh, you you read about it and you see it, but you, but you that's the thing you don't get to see it is what I meant to say. Um, but you read about it, you know what in, how it is in your head when it comes out and it's actually you know with the special effects and then the, the music. Music, that's kind of what makes it whoa that makes you like stand back so that's super exciting for me because that's a unique experience that you all have is that the rest of us we read the comics and then we get to watch the show the people working on it sort of read the comics like frame it out watch you guys do it and then see the final results you're the only people in the world who get to read the comics literally go do the thing <laughs> and then later see like what it looks what like from the outside yeah 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 yeah, it's sometimes it's, it's so different. You know, it's, it's one thing to see it on the page when we're at, at our table reads and, oh, wow, that's going to be cool, it's going to be cool. And then on the day, it's we have to use our imagination a lot. Yeah, you know, exactly. yeah okay, there's something coming in from over there and there's a, a ray of light over here. And But yeah. to, like Renzi said, to see it come to life with the with the finished effects and the music and, and the way that, that our show is shot this, this season. Man. Oh, so cool. That's, That's what kind of makes you step back and seeing that final result because up until then, it's all kind of trying, I guess, especially when you're on a set with the six other actors, seven other actors, you're trying to all get everyone to react to the exact same thing that's all in our heads. Mm -hmm. So that's a tough part to kind of choreograph, okay, exactly where are we looking at, exactly when does it happen, and exactly what is it that we're looking at. So for that sh moment, um, <laughs> I'm, I'm spoiling. Um, I was going to say a word. Um, no, it wasn't even. For a moment in the show, there's a big. I got. I got to be so vague. There's a big thing coming out of something. Um, shoot. And then, um, and then we we all. It's a. I'm gonna leave it at that. We have to use our imagination. Then there's a tea party, and we all have to scene. imagine. Oh, Jesus it. Christ! That was a I, great scene. Yeah. <laughs> That's exactly what Good I imagine job. it's like working in interviews with Marvel, yeah. and I got to see it firsthand. Someone yeah. just go like, the Marvel oh, snipers yeah. are all watching. Yeah. And this is it's like, oh, what is he about? Goodness. Oh, that's what he's about to say. Good job. I'm trying to work my way through it. I want to go back through this footage later, like as I watch the show being like, is it that? That's is it what that? it was. Yeah. 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 And once again, the moment Amy just described of two comic fans that don't know what set life is, one person that's been on set, and one person trying not to say something. Yeah. He knew when we were like, what's going on? <laughs> Wait, did you guys not pick up on any of that? No. Oh, Oh, great. Good. Okay, yeah. good. Great save. That was a good yeah. save. That's yeah, that was, that was solid. <laughs> to us, it's so obvious. <laughs> that was because great we vague know booking. It. <laughs> okay. It just felt like it was. So, so it's a show about families, which is what I, I really think is special and unique in, in that Marvel does a really good job picking different themes and tones in their movies and their shows. This is a family show, mm -hmm. but it has all the action of a Marvel comic. What was it like becoming a family? Because I know Angel, I this know Ryan. This want to hear about, yeah. Like, you guys are family, in it, and it reads, and all of your Twitters and Instagrams, you guys are a legit family now. How is yeah. that on set? How did that come to be? Uh, it was great. I mean, right from the beginning. I feel like that, I mean, that was the first, what was the first couple days we shot? I know definitely it was, uh, we had to actually we the reshoot Wilders. the first yeah. scenes of the first episode yeah. um, just because they wanted to tie some of the things and they wanted to bring more information into the first uh, scenes. And so they kind of rewrote them and we reshot them. And by then, 
we had gotten to know each other so much more mm -hmm. um, when we came back after we shot the pilot. And so that first scene reads so much better, I think, just <laughs> because of that actual connection that we yeah. had, the more time that we got to spend together. But um, in terms of being the family, I think it's just, uh, I think it's just something that you know we, we create up there. So that connection that we have, I mean, you can't can't really make that up. But if you're able to open up and just say. For right now, you are my father. For right now, I'm really mad at you. You know, yeah. that just kind of being honest with that emotion um, and that feeling, those circumstances, I think it, you know, reads, reads true. Yeah, it's, it's, I feel like I, I say it a lot, but I don't, I think it's really cool. It's an amazing aspect of our show to have such a huge cast, but these are, I work with amazing people. Um, it was so easy just right, like our first day, our first day was family day. So we had to figure out these, these dynamics and, and um, quickly, but it was so easy because I work with very talented, giving actors who, you know, ego, we can leave that somewhere else. What do you need? Does this work? How does this feel? And we, we established that early. And um, so I, it's, it's great and really gratifying to hear that it's coming off on screen, but it's, it's, it, just makes it, it just makes the work more, more fun. It makes it more real. And, and then you add dinosaurs and <laughs> fisticons to it, and it, it just, it just it's such an amazing ride. And it is one of the things that makes the show, really sets it apart, is that you do have an enormous cast, but everybody has a, an essential part to play in this sort of giant tapestry. But the, the other thing is that y'all don't get to just hang around and be a family most of the time. You're, I'm going to guess, spending a lot of this season apart with your right. separate families. Yeah, being on the run and all. Yeah, it was. We did have... But there's a moment there, actually, in the trailer, which is funny that we brought it up, because... Um, there's a moment you get to see, so thankfully you get to talk about it because you saw it, <laughs> right? Are we good? Okay, good. Yep. Um, where there's a, he's sitting down and talking to me. Wow, I really can't say much. He's sitting down yep. and he's talking to me, so there is a moment. There are scenes that we get to share together, and those are super exciting because of that, of the tension that's built up over the first season of, of, of the things that he knows I know and the, and the way that we ended things there, and now the second season of us running away, being on the run, them trying to find us, and uh, some moments Moment, I guess he does find us in a way or something and that those scenes were so much fun to yeah. play out because of all of everything that it's built up to yeah mm -hmm. so that stuff is super exciting yeah and the authenticity of the first season like you were talking about allows a foundation for the second season to really grow I love that the first season ended as the comic starts effectively mm -hmm. and therefore when you're a comic fan you got to experience the foundation almost a, a prequel without the stakes being null yeah, like right, my problem yeah. with prequels is you're like well I know who lives the first season was able to do that while building these relationships which is now the second season mm -hmm. they can evolve and now the show's got its foundation it's got its audience so watching exactly. the trailer I was like oh I know what this is gonna be ish yeah. And I can like be a comic fan, but I also love the characters in a way I didn't before. Now, when I, I so I met you at a set visit, so I got to yeah, actually yeah, yeah. be in the the hostile environment, yeah. and it was really cool because everyone that popped in and out of the set was a family, and I'd never been on a set visit that didn't feel like a work day. Mm -hmm. When like people were working actively and then transitioning in and out, and then people would pop in and they'd feel like their character, and you'd see that fade away into actor conversation. Was that the situation on like social days, like when you guys would run into each other? Was the set always so family oriented to the point where like people would hang out after rap yeah um well you know we we have a little uh hangout spot across the street from the lot that we found ourselves uh celebrating birthdays and all that kind of stuff Aww. but yeah i mean it's just it's a great mix it really is a great mix i mean to see us like in between scenes it's like a, a, a auditorium <laughs> full of chairs for all of the castmates, right? All the cast members. But yeah, you know, sometimes you, you kind of get in your own little world and you check in Instagram and stuff. But otherwise, you know, we, people are laughing and, and joking. And, and um, yeah. when, when scripts come in, like somebody, oh, oh, two, two oh ones available. Everybody's on their phones yeah. and, and reading Aww. ahead. That'll be the most quiet moment on set. Oh, two or threes in, boom. You, <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. you sit there and you, and you read for like the next 40 minutes. And then you're happy. Oh, Renzi, look, you get to do this. Yeah. You know, and it's. Yeah. Yeah, no, it's, it's super cool. It's just, I think there's this mutual respect between us all that we, we do. We've seen what, what a, you know, who we are as people and what we can do. And, and I think we go in and just are excited to be able to share scenes with each other and excited uh, to, to so watch what the other performer is going to do. You know, it, it's. It's, it's an art that we're all doing and we're all trying to make something together. That's how we look at it. It's just we're all trying to make this one 
great thing, you know, this great piece of entertainment for this one hour of this one episode that we're doing, and we're all in it together, so why not, you know, I don't understand how it, how it couldn't, I guess I could understand how it couldn't be a family, but on our set, it really is very, like, let's help each other out, it's very mutual. Now, what are you excited for for Alex this year? I'm excited for, there's a... Wow, there's like a, there's an actor a, with yeah, a yeah. particular <laughs> yeah, there's I a, mean, no spoilers, just like what 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 do you like about this role in particular or what's what I like he he goes on a very specific arc this season. Um which I was, every time I read the script, I was like, Yes, 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 every time because it gets more and more interesting as it goes on. Um it it starts off, I guess you starts off and he they're on the run, they're doing this, and he sort of branches out and sort of forms this alliance, in a way, with an unlikely person, and you sort of get maybe get a couple hints as to who that is throughout the trailer, or um, I guess through some of the stuff that Marvel has released already. And uh, I guess that that arc that he goes on there, and where that takes him, was so incredibly exciting. You get to learn so much more about Alex. You get to learn so much more about um, Jeffrey through it, and so. And then when that all comes together to, to the to the to a full to the to its peak, it's it's explosions left and right. So getting to play all that all the way up to the top to the top of that mountain, and seeing where that takes him is super exciting. Pretty I think cool. it changes him forever. Like it, it's he's a pretty vulnerable kid, and a lot of it you can see in the way that he talks to Nico in the first season, and the way he opens up and he really is this honest and puts his heart on his sleeve, which uh, I, I find super admirable. In the second season. He maybe maybe he gets you know finds the consequences for for doing that type of behavior. Because mm, Alex from the comics is is always sort of like the most relatable one, where you're just like you meet him in the comics and he's playing video games, and you're right. just like, yep, okay, we're all this kid. A lot like and me. then you get some surprises that I'm not gonna ruin for folks who haven't read the comics. Right. Um, right and I'm right. like. We'll see. Excellent big <laughs> looking the yeah. whole time. Yeah. I was like, I can imagine what that might be, having read the comics, but I don't know for sure. So yeah. it'll be fun to rewatch this interview and go like, ah, X, Y, Z, the thing from the place. So yeah. what about Jeffrey? Because the parents are on a very different track that yeah. like, it, it will all be a surprise for us who, who love the comics. I, I loved the way they did that over the course of season one to be like, now watch, like you're not expecting this internal dynamic. Mm -hmm. what, what are you looking forward to? Or what you, did you? I think you just kind of, that, that internal dynamic, um, What's interesting is the family deal, right? So Jeffrey loves his son, wants his son safe, but there's a there's a wall between them. Like the secrecy is kind of gone now. The, the parents have been exposed. Jeffrey's been exposed to Alex. But the problems that Alex has with Jeffrey, a lot of it, Jeffrey has those same problems with Jeffrey. <laughs> like, you know, he doesn't want to do those things, but he realizes that he has to. Alex doesn't necessarily have that information yet. So there's, um, you know, he's, Jeffrey's figuring everything out, figuring how to move in, 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 this, um, in this direction. We gotta put up this, this face um, to the world as the Pride. Uh, Catherine and I have to put up this, this united front to the rest of, of Pride, but we're still, we're trying to remove ourselves from that. We're trying to get our kids back safe. Um, I still want to be a good father to my son, you know, so that there's there's conflict. There's a lot of conflict. So whenever that happens, there's there's subtext, you know, beneath words, there, there, there are hidden agendas and everything. And that's just a lot of stuff, you know, fun to, to play all of that stuff. Yeah. I feel like uh, fans would be mad at me if I didn't ask the the question. A lot of times fans want to know what it's like to see the super suit, what's it like to be a superhero, <laughs> what is it like to be on a show that has Carolina being a <laughs> rainbow bright flying around fistagons and a freaking dinosaur. What's it like to be on a set with those men, like that many different superhero dynamics? It's exciting. I mean, yeah, I guess I've, I've gotten to spend the most time with those uh, dynamics. Um, it, it's like we talked about earlier, a lot of imagination. You got to see her fly. You got to see the fistagons. You got to see the dinosaur, um, you know, when she's not there. But it's, it's also, it adds so much more to what we're able to do. It gives us so much more freedom in a way because now we're able to. If she does fall through that skylight, she does isn't dying immediately. She, you know, there's, there's there's this whole world that you don't get to explore in our lives that you sort of get to be a kid again and jump <laughs> in and and and, and look at her flying across the room, right? And it isn't until you see the show that you're like that it's fully realized. But it's it's just an exciting thing to be a part of when when 
what you're shooting is so much bigger than what you are and what I guess our world can even hold. It's like, wow, we're, we're really playing in this sort of playground of, of the things I wished I got to see as a kid, the things I wish I got to see even now, you know? Who doesn't wish that they can fly? And getting <laughs> to play in that world and getting to kind of make that real for millions of people, that's so exciting. Yeah. 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 <laughs> what what he said. <laughs> and of course, those yeah. who might not have uh, met Ryan when he was here a couple of months ago, uh, you are a died in the wool comic book fan. Yes, I am. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's that's so fun. I mean, it's it's you know, you we're again we're kind of at the table reads and and you're seeing this stuff unfold because we don't necessarily um, uh, get stuff like way out in advance. Um, so like when some of there there's going to be a. Uh, Okay. So, Your turn. Yeah. <laughs> There's just going to be a reference to something that, that is exciting for, for fans of, of the MCU. Um, oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. 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 <laughs> Tell yeah. us the Easter egg tie-in. Yeah. That's right. So, uh, not going to happen. <laughs> not going to happen. I, I love my job. <laughs> I love my job. Did um, Josh mention something about it in something? I think he mentioned that it existed. Okay. That, that and And... We've seen um, certain characters exhibit some some very similar eye traits to ah. There's your homework. Another yeah. tie-in. Collider Heroes fans, which was really really fun to see. Um, I don't I don't think that's too much of a spoiler because I, I but I'm just going to randomly mention that there was a comic a few years ago that was a prequel to the Doctor Strange movie that was an official MCU comic that mm -hmm. may have featured a Minoru and maybe. who knows maybe. if yeah. those things I just, are perhaps the, in the world MCU is one big thing. I don't know. I just yeah. watched the trailer. I don't have any secret knowledge. <laughs> I but I have no secret knowledge. I just know that you know, Hulu is a great company that should make more of the show because it might. <laughs> I can just say that publicly. <laughs> Good man. I like, I like the way you think. I'm just saying. I'm just uh, separate from all this. Now, you guys have been part of this universe for a bit now, and you've grown as a family, as we talked about, and that, that is very important. As comic viewers, I mean, you're, you're a ride-or-die comic fan. We talked about how you got to grow up. Like, Avengers video game is how your character's introduced, and you right. as a human got to grow up with the Avengers being the forefront. What's it like to be a part of a Marvel property and then go, like, watch Spider-Verse? Like, is it cool to be like, wait, these guys are friends of mine in that other reality. Right. Well, unfortunately, I didn't get to see Spider-Verse yet. I got <laughs> an sorry. invitation, but I was traveling and I couldn't see it. And I'm, I'm not over that just yet. <laughs> but um, yeah, man, I mean, it's hard to put it in. I mean, it's tough for me to put it in, into words because like that, that was, that's what I grew up with. You know, I, I um, after Stan's passing, you know, I, I binged. Spider-Man and his amazing friends, you know, yeah. because that that was it for me and hearing his, his voice and his narration all day and drawing and, and reading and everything. And so to 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 go to work and, and to play in this world, um, it's great as an actor. It's very gratifying and satisfying as an actor to be able to, to work with with great people. Um, to to work with great writers and 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 to play a part in this orchestra, you know, to 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 do what we do. But as a fan, um, it's just so cool to see this stuff come to life. I mean, I'm geeking out at the references and 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 stuff that, that we get to do and and seeing the the stuff come to life. And it's um, it's like lovingly created. Um, is is so close to to what we saw. Like when you guys see the hostel. We've seen Man. some publicity photos for yeah. the hostel have come out, and uh, I got to walk through it, so it's pretty. Good. <laughs> I'm not jealous. It's fine. It's fine. You should have seen my face when I walked in and just went, <gasps> like I like actually stopped before I went to work and just stood in the space and stared because I knew I'd be distracted. I'd be like peeking out the window like guys. Just that. And the room we were in is a very iconic symbol. In the way, like I had a time, so believe me, I experienced it for both of us just freaking out. December 21st, huh? Yep. Uh, and there's there's stuff on my phone I can now show you because embargo's up in the. I literally just walked around going. Because <laughs> yeah. it's amazing. Yeah. So that must have been uh, an experience. So growing up with this, final question, growing up in this world and then getting the script and then you as an actor knowing what the MCU means to people and knowing what the Iron Man and that world might mean to you, what's that been like to be like a toe in the water? Yeah, it's like, it, I don't even know if I fully, it, you don't, you don't really fully feel that until the, the, the references happen, until you sort of see the tie-ins. 
that and the fact that just before every episode plays, that Marvel screen yeah. comes up and the and the page is flipping through, that freaks me out every time. Because that's the stuff that <laughs> that when I was watching, you know, Spider Man when I was growing up, and all and then the X Men when I was growing up, that's the first title screen that would come up, and I'd be like, oh my god, alright, we're getting ready for a Marvel movie. And now to see that same title screen up before my you know the TV show that I'm on is, it's like that is mind blowing to me. But it's it's those tie-ins that sort of really make it. Whoa, we really are a part of this universe. This thing, like I make, oop, no, I don't. Um, I make a certain reference in the in the um, in the in the show this season, and that that's wow. I wish I could say it because it's a good example. Um, so what I'm thinking is uh-huh. we're gonna do another thing in January, please, and that <laughs> yeah. we'll have you because you're LA local, right? Yes, yes. Because we'll, yes. I feel for you right now. Yeah, we'll have I can't you back, say anything. And we'll have you just go, Thank and you. you can like literally. Re- I will give you. out every single. <laughs> piece of information. It's all the binge show. Yeah. You can dive in. Because yeah, exactly. uh, we're going to have Angel on. We'll have you back. We'll, oh, really? we'll deep dive. Yeah. Oh, it's so, great. Yeah, because a- Angel like wants to talk this stuff as much as you and I know Yeah, yeah, do. yeah. <laughs> and my last note is I love that it's Marvel. I love that it ties into everything. But the show wouldn't work if we didn't fall in love with all of y'all and the work that you're doing and the families you're making. So thank, thank you, you. Oh. for coming and for doing that incredible work. It's so nice. Thank you. Yeah. yeah. And we'll scheme a watch along or something in January. So we're, we're going to figure that out. Yeah. And that way you can be more free. Let it all out. <laughs> Good. Thank you. All right, so we're going to jump into some Minor Mutations and figure out the world of comics and where everything is going. It was a crazy week of Minor Mutations. So much news dropped in one week. It was insane because on a normal week, this stuff would have been lead story because we are getting a Shang-Chi Master of Kung Fu movie. What? This is the Marvel movie that they stole the Wonder Woman screenwriter for that we talked about a few weeks ago. Shang-Chi is getting a movie. It's official. And there's another exciting movie. Blue Beetle is getting a movie. They just quietly put that out there this week. So many movie announcements. On the DC side, Jaime Reyes is coming for us. And maybe Zatanna? This was just dropped into a larger article about a bunch of movies that are in the works, and it was reported as if authoritative, a solo (laughs) movie for Zatanna? I mean, I'm into it, but where did this come from? Also... Preacher is getting another season, a show that I love has done as well as it has because it's as crazy as the comic. We're getting more Preacher. That has been renewed officially. Speaking of as crazy as the comic and a little bit difficult for us all to process, the tag scene from Supergirl this week is leading us into Elseworlds with just a cacophony of Easter eggs and and slaughter and uh, 90s Flash references and so much good stuff. And speaking of that crazy crossover, this image alone has changed my whole world because that is a bat symbol reflecting Batgirl, that is Wally West and Oliver Queen switching actors, and that is Supergirl going, I'm here to talk about this excitement. I can't wait to see Barry Supergirl Allen. interacting. Barry Allen, Oliver mm-hmm. uh, And uh, he wrote in the notes, Bat Signal is cool. Lots of O's. Um, we're, we're losing it this week. Uh, but who's not losing it? It's, uh, that's sort of a disrespectful segue. But I loved this article. Michael B. Jordan talked about taking care of himself after the Killmonger uh, role. And I thought this was really cool. And I was really happy to hear him talk about it. So we'll get into that. I thought I couldn't love him more. I read that article. And then we have one of the most iconic and incredible modern runs on Batman is getting a video game. This was retweeted by Scott Snyder. So that is a stamp of approval. If I've ever seen one, the Court of Owls video game. Hype, 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 hype. So yeah, all of that's happening. <laughs> Out of that, what was the article uh, or bit of news that struck you most? Wow, so much. Uh, so much. Uh, I loved Court of Owls. Um, I'm a big uh, Greg Capullo fan, Scott Snyder. Mm. Um, so, yeah, I was there for it all, and I can't wait to see um, how that translates. Um, I was a big, just Elseworlds, period, like comics yeah. mm-hmm. fan. It was just fun, like, you know, Marvel's What If, you know, just to, to see something that didn't affect anything else, just just tell a weird story and, and let's see where we can go. Um, those CW shows, they, they're, they've they been killing it for a while. Um, me being as old as I am, I'm jazzed to, to see um, 90s Flash, you know, and, <laughs> and that's, that's just going to, it's just no way that's not going to be fun. Um, but Shang Chi. Um, okay, okay. Let <laughs> Tell me, our audience who Shang Chi is. Okay, I'm he excited. is the master of kung fu. Um, let me let me let me tell you. Um, when I was a kid, before I um, thought I would ever be Jeffrey Wilder, I wanted to be Bruce Lee. Um, Bruce Lee was a real live superhero to me. I watched Chinese Connection. I had that on Betamax. If you don't know what that is, look it up. <laughs> um, <laughs> I like I watched it over and over and over again. So when I found out, so 
I knew who Iron Fist was before I knew who Shang Chi was. So I was a huge uh, Power Man and Iron Fist fan because you know it hit the the the, the sweet spot. I saw an African American superhero and I saw a um, a living weapon martial mm -hmm. artist. So that that hit me twice. Perfect, right? <laughs> so then I'm looking at Shang Chi and like, wait a minute, this guy's a martial artist and he's like a superhero. And and just because he's like the baddest man on the planet, mm -hmm. <laughs> so. Um, I was like always, always a, a big fan of that character, and I drew him back in the day as much as I, I drew. Like I would draw him and Iron Fist, oh, you know, cool. fighting together, and and uh, so yeah, I'm, I'm really, really excited to see what what that's going to look like. So it's 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 just a whole bunch of comic goodness. Yeah, it's been a big week. week. Yeah, yeah. And speaking of art, you drew a cover of Runaways, uh, which we had teased last time. So I want to yeah. make sure people can find that because uh, issue thirteen. Issue thirteen. Yeah. Uh, variant cover by Jeffrey Wilder himself. I just. Like the, to me, that's still one of the craziest accomplishments of like comic fan, comic actor, uh, comic artist made it all happen. You have like the yeah. cool hat trick nobody else has. <laughs> it's it's amazing. amazing. Yeah. You and Kevin Smith have that trifecta of like did the thing. <laughs> oh, uh, so this week, uh, I think we needed to actually before we talk about he just described Shang Chi. Yeah. Can you give a thirty second Captain Marvel since we didn't get to cover that in the trailer talks? A lot of people have been asking who Captain Marvel is. If you were to give a thirty second as he just did with Shang Chi, who is Captain Marvel to you? Okay, um, Captain Marvel is Carol Danvers. Uh, and depending on which version of her story they end up going with, she is an Air Force pilot um, who sort of gets... Originally, she was involved in sort of an accident involving alien tech that imbued her with superpowers. So she became, in the regular comics, she became a superhero uh, with the name of Ms. Marvel for many years. Uh, traded names a couple times, Binary Warbird, had a lot of ups and a lot of downs, ran with the Avengers for many years, uh, and in the year 2012, uh, picked up a new name because she derived part of her legacy from the Kree warrior Marvell. Um, she took a name that he and Monica Rambeau and a few others had used, uh, Captain Marvel, uh, became her superhero name. And she was sort of reborn in herself. She has a fantastic, uh, there's a great Kelly Sue DeConnick quote, like Captain America, when you knock him down, he gets up because it's the right thing to do. When you knock Carol Danvers down, she gets up because F you. <laughs> <laughs> that is a perfect description. <laughs> um, uh, and we'll see how much of that, like Kelly Sue DeConnick, uh, kind of, in, in some ways, redefined like the character. There's a ton of great work that went before that, but it is the perfect place to begin. It's the one Kevin Feige shouts out. If you're curious mm -hmm. about her, start with that run, and it will make you fall in love with Carol. It will make you fall in love with her uh, mysterious alien powers. They're playing with her origin in the comics a little bit right now, which I have a feeling will end up... Uh, we'll, we'll have a new origin by the end of next year between the comics and the movies, um, but she will be the mighty warrior uh, that we love, and I'm very, very excited for it. And there's a limited run called The Life of Captain Marvel in the comics you can pick up, which is kind of like a retelling and revamping origin. A lot of people tweeted us like this morning asking who Captain Marvel was, so I'm going to grab that clip, send it your way. Uh, that's who that is. Uh, I also, can I, can I talk about the Michael B. Jordan thing? Yes. So uh, my, I found this article, and it fascinated me because a lot of people talk about like, method acting or the ramifications of a character and all these things and it's kind of become this like silly trope uh, like the the idea that you know Daniel Day Lewis wouldn't wear a jacket on the set so he got pneumonia and like da ha ha like it's actually affects some people like depending on how deep you go to a character and Michael B. Jordan realized that Killmonger was isolated his whole life he realized that he removed himself from society and that shaped the way you feel that character now everyone has a different method and everyone goes into a character differently but it really showed on camera they didn't mention his isolation but you felt it, which I thought was fascinating that he took that to such a literal level. He went to therapy after playing Killmonger because he felt removed even after they wrapped. He felt like he had isolated himself to a level that he didn't feel well and he didn't realize for a few weeks that was the feeling he just felt off and he just wasn't feeling okay so he took it upon himself as well as he treats himself physically to make sure mentally he was as well so he went to therapy and I thought it was really cool for an actor of his global stature to be like no no I needed help so I got help because mental health is as big of an issue if not more of an issue as physical health in this country but we don't talk about it because we've decided that our brains are supposed to be like fortified it's not the 50s anymore if you have a problem you should be able to speak about it and I love that someone like this spoke about it. This man is Creed, this man is Killmonger, this is as strong <laughs> as they come, and he had the strength to say, hey, I need help. So I wanted this article to be kind of a, a testament to even heroes need help, and even the strongest of us need help, and mental health is, is very serious. So take care of yourself, because that is how we live happily and keep going. So I love that this article happened. Okay, that's beautiful. That, like, I, the importance, I, I 
standing ovation for that. <laughs> like taking care of yourself can, involves your body, involves your mind, uh, involves your emotions, uh, and that that is a really wonderful thing. I'm He's sorry. got some mental abs too. I'm just saying. <laughs> <laughs> so I thought it was really cool that that article came out. And I was proud of him. Interesting. Like a, as an actor, have you had experiences with going to really dark places and then, I mean, coming back to your day to day life? Yeah, not as much because. Um, Jeffrey's probably the closest that I've come to being a, a, a bad guy, mm. so to speak. Um, so with with auditions, you know, I've, I've auditioned for for bad guys and, and you know people who are little, you know, in 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 that different headspace. And it's part of your job to to go to that place. And in order for you to believe the character that I'm I'm portraying, it has to be real for me at some point. You have you have to go in there make that thing real, make the motivations real, and it all has to come from a pure place. Why am I angry? Okay, this is why. How does that feel? And how does it feel to, to sit in that and just let it um, to become a real uh, part of you so that it's grounded? Um, and I get it. I mean, Killmonger, it, it, it was complicated. There was a, a lot of, um, there was a lot of anger there. There were, there were, there's a lot of hurt. You know, you, you see the anger manifests itself outwardly in, in a lot of these characters, not just Killmonger, but but even Loki. You know, mm -hmm. you, you see anger, but it comes from a place of hurt. It comes from a, 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 a hole, you know, um, uh, some pain that was was inflicted. And so for him to, to do that is commendable as an actor because it showed on screen. But it's great for him to reveal the toll that it took and what he had to do in order to to you know to recalibrate, because a lot of people like like you said, um, Coy, it's 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 a perfect analogy. We saw what dude's body looked like. Like I was, I saw <laughs> saw him in Black Panther. I was doing push-ups in the, in the aisle. <laughs> but I mean, we see that work. But he also had to do that emotional work, and um, to 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 build himself up to to play that character. But a lot of times, man, those of us that consider ourselves strong or or, or who are looked upon as being strong, I mean, we need that help too because we're, we're asked to, to not just carry our burdens that we can't always, because we're, we're strong, we can't always address them. We can't always, you know, outwardly show them because we have to carry other burdens. Mm -hmm. So it's really cool that, um, I hope that, that, that people really, really um, are inspired to, to take a look in, in within themselves to see, do I need help? And once they have that realization to go get it. And that, that's, that, again, beautifully said. I did love that sense in the article where you sort of like, it, 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 sometimes it takes time to realize like, oh, this is not the regular way I would be feeling. Mm -hmm. Like it can take time to sort of be like, something is off and I don't know what. And sometimes, you know, like that's where other people can help. And yeah. that's, that's fabulous. Yeah, I, I thought it was important. What, what, uh, can we talk about Blue Beetle? We should. <laughs> like, I, so it's tough because we don't always know which of these announcements is going to materialize. Mm -hmm. We we now have like a giant dream vision board of DC movies that we really hope are happening. Um, I, you know, and Zatanna is up there for me. But Blue Beetle seems like I'm I'm pinning my hopes on it because it seemed like a more concrete rumor. Uh, it had more names in it. <laughs> <laughs> the article had more names attached. So I was like, maybe. Yeah. Um, but so DC's Blue Beetle, uh, we don't know much about what the story would be. It's probably going to be Jaime Reyes, mm -hmm. um, who's had a few series now as the Blue Beetle. We don't know if they like at least one of those. He's had a series with Ted Cord, the former Blue Beetle. Uh, it's another legacy character from DC's rich history. Uh, what do you want to see if this does happen? I want to see the passing of a torch. I want to see the oh. like old guard, new guard movie. I want to see Ted Cord add like the first act and him having to hand over the mantle. I want to see like the reluctant Ted Cord because I really think that's what makes Blue Beetle this Blue Beetle so exciting to me is that it is a legacy character. Character, but I think that the new Blue Beetle can be told without a full movie of Ted Cord. So I want to see that like passing of the torch. Like I hear they're doing with Green Lantern. And I also like that to be almost like a buddy cop movie, like a bu buddy Beetle movie, because uh, that's my genre that I love. And I think that works for this character. And I also I want to see a movie that's not set in New York or California. I would mm. like to see like this can take place on the border. This can take place in Mexico. This can take place in a different environment and I want to see that story be told. I want to see I want to see a different group of people see someone that looks like them as a hero and I want to see them see their environment and go like that's what I'm living through. This is what I'm dealing with. Look how he's handling it and they get a new hero. So I want that story told for the sake of a, a bunch of people that don't have a hero right now. Mm. That that's a great pitch. <laughs> I'd like to see that. Um, you know, it's what's funny. So I'm I was more familiar with Ted Cord, you know, years and years ago. My introduction to Jaime was um, Young Justice, ah. and I 
I really dug that that portrayal and his relationship with the scarab, and you know, it's almost like um, um, Venom. You know, yeah. just just having <laughs> having that other voice in your head that that doesn't always want to push you in the direction you want to go in, um, but just having that that internal struggle and just the 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 young hero trying to figure everything out to figure out all of this power, and and it's not like like. Firestorm back, you know, he's got this 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 wise, older, you know, <laughs> professor and, in your head. Yeah, you might not want to do that, and you <laughs> might want to do this, and but you've got this voice in your head. Yeah, let's kill them. Let's just right. destroy them. Why are we taking time? Let's just so having to 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 fight that and and to be this hero to to step into those shoes. It's it's a fun story, and uh, yeah, I'm looking forward to it. But that that passing of the torch thing. And I do think there's some potential. I, I have no idea if this timing is uh, coincidental, but it is interesting to me that it seems like Blue Beetle as a movie, as a standalone especially, really would lend itself to sort of the adventure mode of filmmaking. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I don't know, like, I haven't had a chance to see Aquaman yet, but we know that DC is trying out this, like, make a big adventure out of your superheroes. And it seems to me like Blue Beetle would make a natural follow-up in that, like, where they sort of, like, follow us on the next great DC adventure. He's going to yeah. get a scarab. He's going to go on magical adventures. There's going to be a lot of danger. Yeah. Like, it... It seems like that could be done because you know you, you're not necessarily going to be like the dark and gritty Jaime Reyes movie, <laughs> like you know. It, and so if it's going to follow in a mode, I'd be happy to see it be inspired by this, you know, the swashbuckling take yeah. that we hear about, and I will get to see soon. I don't know. We'll hear and see the swashbuckling. <laughs> I haven't seen it either. Uh, so briefly, I want to mention this image before we go into the comic stuff. Uh, the image of the bat signal, I think, is one of the coolest ways to tease a character. I love that they keep showing us a lot of. Wally West in Oliver Queen's outfit and vice versa. This image of that four effectively, because I'm going to count the bat signal as a character. The four of them in one moment, that, that's the fun that, that we're talking about Blue Beetle. That's the fun of the DC TV universe. So I'm really excited because I'm watching Flash and Arrow simultaneously trying to catch up and then I'll get to League and then I'll get to Supergirl. But right now I only have a few seasons in me and I already am in love with these characters. So I'm really excited to see this crossover and every image they've teased has been great. I love how Stephen Amell runs his Twitter and his, his Facebook and like <laughs> I love the social media as a guy going, I'm excited. You should be too. We we have no reason to have a soft spot for people on the internet just shouting that you should be excited about things. I don't, I don't know what you're talking what about. What do you mean comics are great to yell about on the internet? Comics are great to yell about on should the internet. Are there any coming out this week that maybe we want to talk about? I do believe we have a comic list of the week and uh, let's see, it starts off with a book that's very near and dear to my heart mm. because it is both a seasonal book and a certain merc with a bag of presents. It is Deadpool versus Santa. <laughs> Deadpool number seven is my number one pull of the week. Surprise, surprise. <laughs> <laughs> I am also going to live up to my stereotype by telling you to read some Kieran Gillen and some basically not serial numbers filed off Dungeons and Dragons comics. There is a comic called Die. Uh, and if you're looking at that cover and you're thinking it could assemble into a D20, you and I both need to be reading this book. <laughs> and then number three, it took me a second because I had to see that. And our number three book of the week is Doomsday Clock number eight. If you haven't been reading Doomsday Clock, you should start at number one, but number eight is going to be crazy. <laughs> this book is so intense, and I can't, I'm actually, I'm loving it, and I thought I wouldn't because that is so sacred to me, the Watchmen series. Next up, we've got a brand new number one. There were a bunch of great starts from books this week, but I wanted to shine a spotlight on this one because I'm really excited for this take on Martian Manhunter number one out this week. And then Batman number 60, I continue to be deeper and deeper in love with Tom King's run on Batman, and this is a actually good place to jump on. It is a Penguin story. There's been a couple Penguin stories on the way to here, but Batman number 60 should be a pick upable approachable book. Uh, what, uh, want to tell me about Die? Because I'm very intrigued. Okay. Die's a new comic from Image. It is the new one from Kieran Gillen. He, of course, writes Wicked and Divine. Issue 40 of that is out today, but I figure if I haven't got you by now, you're just going to catch it and trade later. Uh, so he is one of my very favorite writers, and he's also steeped in uh, a bunch of like the RPG stuff that is very much my jam. I um, mean, he is writing about a group of adults who, like, some stuff went down when they were teens, messing around with role-playing games. And it's this great sort of take on the history of that form of, you know, game and storytelling. Uh, but also, it's this very specific story about these uh, kind of lost adults who kind of have to come back together to figure out what happened. And it like, there's a lot, issue one really takes its time making you fall in love with the characters and the world, and it's gonna sort of blow up and get crazy as it goes forward. Cool. Um, but uh, yeah, it's supernatural, it's uh, sort of adult drama, it's also just a really fun comic about games and, and humanity, and it's got art by Stephanie Hans, uh, a painted painting artist, uh, painter, 
There, that's the word. <laughs> um, what do you call it when they paint? Uh, she does a, a painted style of illustration that you might have seen from some of her marble work, but this is, I think, like either her first regular ongoing interiors or like one of her first. Um, I'm really excited for this pairing for this book, uh, and it starts this week. Hell yeah. Any of these jump out at you from the five? Unfortunately, um, I am behind on everything right now. <laughs> it's been a little hectic, um, so I'm like, I'm playing catch up with, with everything. My stack is just, just growing. So um, The Martian Manhunter has, has always been kind of intriguing because um, as, a, as a kid, I didn't really, I thought, okay, he's like Vision kind of, and then it's like, oh, no, it's a <laughs> lot more to this character. And um, so, yeah, he, he's really uh, intrigued me. Um, I, I loved him in the uh, JLA cartoon. And uh, so he's, he's just an interesting character to explore, like his, his, how he fits in. And he's so incredibly powerful, but how he, he fits in and, and sees himself a part of and apart from humanity and everything. And so um, that's, that's probably the first one I'd pick up. I love how they're using him in Justice League as like this omnipotence. Like yeah. they use him as like the, the re, like he's, he's everything. He's the yeah. communication. He's the powerhouse. Right. Like I really, that's my favorite Marsh Manor so far is Justice League right now. I got to talk about Deadpool number seven because that number seven might intimidate you, but no, no, it is practically a number one. The current Deadpool run is not a arc-based comic. It's one shots and like two shots. So you can pick up almost any issue of this seven issue run and it will make sense without ever having touched a Deadpool book. This one you should because it's Deadpool versus Santa. Now, <laughs> Scotty Young has been an artist with Marvel for a very long time. He is writing Deadpool and his fun, comic-y, wacky style translates to his writing really well as well. Uh, Nick Klein was drawing the book. It is an incredible artist as well. I really like how approachable this take on Deadpool is, especially since they're re-releasing the movie for the third time. It's another <laughs> wave of people seeing the movie, so it's another opportunity for people to pick up the comic. So I think it's a great tie-in. There is a Christmas Deadpool movie in theaters on December 12th, and there is a Christmas Deadpool issue available right now that you can pick up. So Deadpool number seven, and then Doomsday Clock. So I still, full disclosure, I'm still sitting on my Doomsday Clock issues. Okay. But you sell me on that this is working. So I haven't read issue, no, I did read issue seven. So it is evolving into a great meshing of universes. Like the way they utilize the Joker actually fits in the canon of what I consider Joker's lack of canon. Okay. And the way they've reinterpreted Rorschach really bothered me at first, but really sold me once it developed. So all of these characters that I love from Watchmen are being re-manipulated, full, full disclosure, they're being manipulated to fit into the DC universe. And the first three issues, I was like, that's what do you do. But now that they've all been breathing in this universe, I buy it. So, so it was a slow burn of me going like, Watchmen, Watchmen, and me being the fan going like, no. But I kept at it, and now I really love seeing, it's, at the end of the day, it's really exciting to see Batman and Rorschach talk. At the end of the day, it's really exciting to see the Joker anywhere near any of the characters we love from that world. So it took a bit, but now that they're here, I consider this like an Elseworld. It's a separate story. It's seeing all these characters, and it's really fun. And it's that slow, bur slow burn Alan Moore that we liked Watchmen about, but with characters that we can appreciate in modern. Yeah, I, I've been resisting it, but the variant cover this week, which is uh, like, just, I don't think this is spoilers because it's on the variant cover. Um, it's uh, just the hands of Ozymandias holding two puppets, and one puppet is Superman, and one puppet is Dr. Manhattan, and mm. I'm just like, oh, damn it, I'm, I have to <laughs> read this book. And that's the thing, is it only could happen in this version, and like, we always wanted to know, like, when we were kids, you're like, Dr. Manhattan versus Superman, who'd win? That's the cover. Like, Nobody thought that! I, How old were you, and why were you reading Watchmen? I, I, I'm very young. Uh, so <laughs> I, I think it's a really good opportunity to, to have people get introduced to Watchmen, and people can go back and appreciate Watchmen, so as much as it took some corralling, I I'm all in. Excellent. So we do not have time for Twitter questions this week, but next week we'll answer a boatload because this week a Shang-Chi movie was a minor mutation. So Shang-Chi! <laughs> This is, okay, so I just, real quick, this tells me, my guess, like phase four Marvel is, it looks like they're going global. We don't know if that, like Captain Britain rumor is true, but it mm -hmm. would make sense if they're sort of spinning off around the world and being like, we're gonna add these pieces to the universe. We know Black Widow's coming, we know Shang-Chi is coming. We don't, we're starting to get pieces of what the future looks like, and that is so exciting to me. I have a very, very big theory about the future of phase four, and I think they're in another dimension altogether, and that is why we get a Spider-Man movie right away. I'm not and I think that. that Peter Parker might actually be dead and therefore they introduce a new realm of heroes because they go through the microverse in Ant-Man and it's an actually a new dimension so all the characters that died at the end of Infinity War are actually dead and we enter a new dimension and that's no. how it ties into the world no. and Spider-Verse no. is a great way no. to broach that no. so I think that Shang-Chi no. being introduced is actually a new wave of all new heroes that we're going to fall in love with just like the Avengers and this announcement kind of ties into that so we'll find out and we'll talk about it next week I refuse but thank wow. you Ryan for being here <laughs> 
Thanks so much for coming in, man. We appreciate Thanks it. Thanks for having me. Anytime. Where can people find you on the internet? I am at the Ryan Sands. At the Ryan Sands, just about everywhere. And Talk comics with him. Talk runaways with him. It drops on the 21st. 21st. All 13 episodes only on Hulu. Yeah. Happy holidays. You got runaways. <laughs> and so until next week, stay sweaty, y'all. Hey everybody, Mark Ellis here. Thanks for watching this episode. You want to watch more? Then click up here. Or you can click right here for more great content from Collider. If you haven't subscribed to Collider Video, do so right now and share this vid with your friends. Thanks for watching.